Despite everything that the Fed is trying to do to slow down real estate, our local numbers remain amazing. We go over an article about the wealthy getting back into real estate, the luxury real estate safe haven for their money. They just had a really good month in October in the stock market, and we're starting to see that money flock over. And then uh, my friend, Matt Frankel, who I've never met before, I love it. He goes out there, he makes a couple of predictions on the real estate market. We talk about those this week's Mailbag, Market Monday, Kim Malloy, Aaron Benton. Here we go. October is my favorite month and it's gone like that. Yes, it's November already. Holy cow. I know. So, uh, but last week's numbers, Bluffton, what's your takeaway from those numbers, Kim? Everything's down except the average sales price is, is up by 28%. Yep. So again, we're looking at, you know, inventory being an issue and that continuing to drive a appreciation. And It's historically low. It is. Uh, look at the last 24 months. Uh, October was the lowest inventory month of the last 24 months with the exception of December of last year. Right? It's just, you know, it speaks again to you have to really pay attention to the numbers, the real numbers, and talk to people in the local market. Average selling price. Up 28%. That's that's big. I mean, that's really amazing. That's great appreciation. So there's an article this week about uh, real estate being a safe investment for the wealthy. And we continue to see this, right? Absolutely. The, the slowdown that we've had recently, the, the reason that that slowdown doesn't concern me is because the slowdown with buyers is less of a slowdown with buyers than there is a reduction in inventory. So as long as we maintain some sort of a balance, it's going to remain a seller's market or a neutral market. This is still a very, very strong seller's market in our local marketplace. In this article talks about the opportunities that wealthy people see in investing in luxury properties, right? What are you seeing right now in terms of the luxury properties? There seems like there's a bit of a slowdown. So it's interesting you say that because I personally have experienced kind of a a jump in interest in investment properties in, in the more luxury price range. Give us a time frame on that. In the last couple of weeks? Uh, yes, in the last couple of weeks. So in over the summer, I, everyone got a little bit quiet as far as the, the higher dollar range yep. for investment properties. And in the last two weeks, I am hearing back from investors who were quiet over the summer and they're like, wow, I'm seeing a lot of opportunity here and we're having really good conversations and yeah. I, and working my tail off. <laughs> so, Why do you think that is? Well, I think if you are an experienced investor, then you know that when you know the situation is as it is right now, you're not necessarily paying attention to the interest rates as your your driving you know factor of decision making. You're you're really paying attention to opportunity, and when you're seeing some buyers fall off that's creating more opportunity for someone who's experienced, has the money to invest and are ready to go. Purposely, I don't pay that much attention to the news. Yeah. But somebody told me, and I think I read somewhere that October wound up being a very, very good month for the stock market. Yeah. One of the best months that the stock market has had in, right. a, in a long time. So, what effect do you think that's had on these wealthy I think investors? A positive effect, right? right? Their money's up, so they want to put it into real estate where they know it's going to probably be a safer hedge against inflation, and they're, they know it's something that's going to continue to see appreciation. I, I think that's it. I, I really think that that's why you're starting to see a renewed interest in the luxury yes. properties is that stock portfolio, there's been some recovery in it. Hey, maybe we should peel some money off of, uh, you know, we're not gonna take it all out, but right. maybe we should take some money off the table in terms of the stock market and move, right. it, move it into real estate. Right. right, and there's something to be said too by, you know, this time of the year, trying to get some things done before the end of the year. And then, you know, the greatest factor I've experienced historically in luxury and investing is, there's an election next week if you haven't heard. Oh, oh, I didn't know, really? Did you, got, did you know? Likely on a Tuesday. And what I have experienced historically is six, eight weeks preceding an election, even a midterm election, people tend to pump the brakes. Sure. The experience has been, it, it, on the other side, it doesn't really matter who wins the election in terms of the market picking back up. I mean, it certainly does matter yeah. who wins, right? But in terms of seeing people get back into real estate, it, it hasn't really mattered who won. 
Uh, I think it will this time, but right after that happens, that's when the purchase has happened. So my prediction is the luxury market, it might be just short term, but from right after this election through about February, maybe all the way until April, we're gonna see a big tailwind on the luxury market here locally. That's. I believe that too. And also with the election, it's like, after the election happens, all that distraction goes away because it's, it's just a lot of no a lot of noise. And yeah. this guy, Matt Frankel, he made a couple of predictions. Did you see that? Yeah. Well, three real estate predictions for the rest of 2022. Uh, first one, mortgage rates will start to moderate even with the Fed rate hikes. What do you think? There's, there's a lot of talk about that actually happening before the end of the year. So nobody truly knows, right? But yeah. I think it would be wise. Yeah, we're going to have Aaron on in a couple of minutes to talk about mortgage with us. We'll ask him specifically that question. Second prediction, home prices will stay elevated. I mean, we're going to continue to see appreciation. So I expect in our market that that's, they're not going down. Yeah, I think that's a softball. Staying elevated, like prices in our local market are not going to go down. Right. Period. Right. What I think is really going to happen is they're going to go up. Uh -huh. And they're going to go up by a pretty decent amount. If our you know average over the last 15 years was three or four percent average appreciation, and that takes into account what happened in 2007 and 2008 where the market went way down, uh, we're going to see greater appreciation than three or four percent over yeah. these next couple of years. It's going to be to the tune of, in my opinion, at least 10 percent, all driven by a lack of inventory. And then last, real estate will be the weakest stock market sector. You know, real estate companies that trade uh, on the stock market, those companies are going to have some real headwinds mm -hmm. in terms of turning profit. What right. do you think with that? I mean, I, I think that holds true, right? Because real estate is around everything we're saying. Yeah. Real estate is going to continue to be a positive influence for investors, for um, against inflation. As Yeah, I agree with this guy on number three. I think that there's a lot of companies that were throwing caution to the wind and they were making money hand over fist during the pandemic and that boom. And now things have shifted. They're cutting staff. They're cutting work workforce, they're changing the things that they're investing in, they're getting a little bit leaner, and they're right-sizing their organizations to the real real estate market that we're going to see going right. forward, right? right? Yeah. So that's what's happening. The next article is about Federal Reserve and how's the reset going. And before we jump into that conversation, I want to welcome Aaron on from Mortgage Network for our Mortgage Minute. Hello, hello. hello. What's going on, man? So before we get into this article and the question from the previous article, what the hell's going on with mortgage? People are still interested in buying. I mean, we're slowing down slightly, but to your point with the luxury market, I think people see value in real estate here. Uh, yes, the national media has said interest rates have gone up, which they have. Uh, However, the mortgage industry, if you will, is offering adjustable rate mortgages. Uh, those are making a big comeback uh, because people are having the ability, if you will, to save some money uh, yeah. on a short-term basis. Uh, knowing that a refinance is, is possible. So as far as the national media is concerned, you're feeling, yes, rates are going up, but we've been able to be creative uh, to still find financing for the people who are certainly interested in buying today. Give us an idea of what one could expect. Like when, when we hear the media talk about interest rates, they're talking about something in the mid sevens at this point in most cases, right? They're not couching that by saying on a 30 year fix. So what could somebody that's thinking about doing a five or seven or 10 year arm, what could they expect? Give us a range. Perfect. For uh, an adjustable rate mortgage, uh, you're probably looking somewhere between 6% up to 7%. There's factors involved, whether it's a jumbo loan or a conforming loan size. Obviously credit score plays a role and, and down payment amount. So there's, there's factors that work into that rate, but when we're talking about a 30 year fix, if you will, and we say that's seven and a half percent, and I'm telling you an adjustable rate can be around seven. That half a percent savings is, is pretty significant, especially looking at the historical trends where we would anticipate that rate history tells us that rates are gonna come down here probably within 18 months. Yep, totally agree. So uh, we were just talking about uh, this article where Matt Frankel uh, made a couple of predictions and one of them was that mortgage rates will start to moderate even with the Fed continuing to hike the interest rates. Is that a good prediction? We've been in this market, if you will, or, or the media buzz, hey, we're going to raise. The last announcement, which we kind of anticipated on, was Jerome Powell had a little bit softer tone. Why? Well, we do have a re-election coming up this coming Tuesday. Yeah. So that plays a role. In regards to moderation, I, I do agree with you. I think at some point, the Fed wants to put the economy to a complete halt. I think people
people, the natural public is saying, you know what, I still want to purchase property. Uh, I think moving forward, you are going to see some moderation. I don't think we're going to reach these 10, 11 percent that quite honestly could have been on the table uh, two months ago, a month ago, where we were seeing trajectories more towards the 1970s, 1980s. But we've tapered slightly. I think people, the, the American people, are getting a little bit of a grip on where rates stand. I think that the federal government is, is kind of seeing, hey, you know what, we're, we're not, we haven't squashed inflation, but there is a little bit of a slowdown down out there. And I could see some moderation certainly in the months to come. So in a nutshell, how do you think this whole thing is going? You know, I'm looking at what the Fed is doing. I'm looking at, it can only be described as rhetoric. The right. Fed is participating in some of the most strong language that I've ever heard the Fed speak. Is it because what they're doing hasn't been working really well and they don't really have any different playbook other than just raise interest rates? So now they're doing like, we're going to keep raising them and we really mean it. Don't make us pull this car over, <laughs> right? Because it's not... This is a stimulation that they're trying to make on the real estate market. The general public, the people that I'm talking to, they want to still sell their house. They want to buy property. Like people still want to come here and they're inserting themselves into this equation and trying to artificially change the natural course of what the general consumers want to do, right? And I don't see it being terribly effective. Now you're in the mortgage world, right? Like your world is different than mine. You don't necessarily see cash buyers. What's your perspective on the effect? See, I'm seeing buyers still certainly interested. Last year, the market went so fast. There were individuals who had to kind of see it, walk through the property. Now we do have homes sitting on the market a little bit longer, not much. Someone has the ability to come here and purchase a house. In our local market, I think that's what's really important is we have to look locally here. Our appreciation is up and the cost to wait. I mean, when I talk to clients I and mean, we talk about the cost of waiting and we have all seen that the cost of rent is continuing to go up. Rent is certainly always market value, if you will. And when you're waiting, that is, it's gonna cost more. Rent is 100% interest. When you buy a house, especially in our area, appreciating value, you have the ability to purchase now, get the home that you like, and potentially refinance in the near future. And as long as people can understand, hey, you know, this is the home that I love, maybe not the, the forever interest rate, I'm seeing many people buy into that, that concept because history tells us rates are going to come down. Does the Federal Reserve need to be reformed? What a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Myself right now, I'm in a house that I've been in there for a long time. I've probably never thought more about selling my house and doing something different than I have been over the last couple months. Less about the economy, more about lifestyle. So I think I'm in a position where if the Fed wasn't artificially trying to manipulate the market, I would probably do something. And I think there's a lot of people out there that are exact in exactly the same mindset as me. And I'm not saying that I'm not going to, but their actions are causing me some pause. Like, should they have that power? Certainly the media, they will flood the media. They will flood the media with fear. They will tell you, you know what? You should halt. However, the numbers will tell us in regards to inventory, now you have very low inventory. So unbelievably now awesome. is a phenomenal time to list your property. Uh, we've already talked about you have this luxury market here where the stock market has gone up last October, yeah. just this last month. And that kind of money, I mean, even when we had the Great Depression, real estate still advanced in price. People want to put their money in something tangible. Exactly. I, I, I think we're aligned with that. Like, you know, why did they have the power to try and artificially move a market? And the only arrow that they have is such a narrow arrow that in this situation, they're having to couple the one move that they have with crazy rhetoric, which is, you know, rippling through the entire economy in a way that no unregulated organization should have that power, in my opinion. Well, they're driving, they're driving out first time home buyers. I mean, when we talk about affordability and i just had mentioned the idea of co the cost of rent is going up we know that landlords and businesses they still need to make their payments as inflation is increased we know that the landlords their costs have gone up those are being passed on to our renters the renters are saying hey let's let's have an opportunity here to to buy then all of a sudden they're getting in a market where we know that interest rates have doubled since the beginning of the year and we start now we start to talk about affordability issues 
Yeah. So yes, the the arrow is 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 very narrow, but it is it's very targeted at a small subsection, if you will, of affordability. Yes. Because the luxury market is still going to progress and move forward. However, those first time home buyers, they're the ones struggling. Yeah, Absolutely. they're screwed. And and the Fed has been doing this now for months. For those people, it's worse. Probably the exact opposite person that they wanted to right. affect. In, her, in hurting homeownership. To Aaron, I totally agree. And you know, this article is, is about that, right? Is it how is the Federal Reserve's reset going? The consequences of their actions are affecting the market in a way that is doing exactly the opposite of what they want to do. But they're encouraging people to stay in their homes at their lower interest rate because we just had this massive purchase where people just bought houses. The one thing that I find really encouraging is in a lot of the polls that I've read recently, as they interviewed people that have bought over the last couple of years in the frenzy, a lot of those people settled for a property that's not really what they want. Exactly. Right. So they've ridden this wave of appreciation. They've got a bunch of equity. And, you know, once this pendulum swings the other way, I think we're going to see a mass transition for people to try and scramble into right. the properties that they really want, the location that they really want, the size property they really want, really all of those kinds of things. But I find this so interesting what the Fed's doing. I, it just from every number that I look at, when I set aside what the media tells me or what the Fed says, and I look at our local numbers, it's not having the effect that they're intending. So, hey, I understand that you guys have got together and you've uh, started an investing group or can you tell us a little bit about that. So we have partnered up and we are starting a new investment network group called Wealth Investment Network. It's going to kick off in January. Really, our whole premise behind it is to help educate newer investors by more experienced investors coming in and telling their stories and then having professionals you know in real estate and financial advising lending we're not, we're not creating an investment group it's more of a networking opportunity to learn from one another and help teach people how to build wealth through investing in real estate we have a passion and we understand that real estate is an appreciating asset what we're going to do is each month third wednesday of every month starting january 18th 2023 we're going to have a speaker or multiple speakers talk about their real estate investing journey. Awesome. Put you on the spot with some tough questions today. I Thanks love for it. taking it. I early. love it. <laughs> As this thing goes on, like the we can start to see the results or lack of results. We need to really talk about what's happening here in our local market because people are really, really confused. I find they're really, really confused. And there's a great opportunity to speak to people about actual numbers. Those are facts and kind of shed light on what's happening here in the local market. So I appreciate you stopping in and diving into those. Okay, Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you again. Pleasure. Pretty cool mailbag this week. Uh, distressed mom asked, hey, Dan and guest Kim. Based on what you guys have been seeing lately, I'm not the only one having trouble finding a home in Bluffton. Yeah. The, the inventory is... The numbers, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If I can't find the place that will meet my family's needs in the next few months, things are going to get tough. What are my options? Should I risk breaking our bank or settle for something less than ideal or sit and hope for the right house to come in time? Wish you were my agent. That's why I can't use my name. Well, what advice would you give to stress them off? I, well, I mean, I would first say I'm sorry for the stress that you feel and there is a solution and we will find it, but it's important to just relax and make sure you have everything in place as far as knowing exactly what it is you want and looking for a home through that lens versus, oh my gosh, I got to get a home or I'm going to, you know, because then then you end up unhappy no matter what. So just really dialing down on what are the five most important things that you need out of this house and what are you willing to let go of also, and just approach it with confidence that you're going to, we're going to find it. My advice is very similar. I'll add one thing to what Kim said though. When a house comes on the market, the listing price, in my opinion, is the seller's wish. Typically, when you make an offer, the offer price is the buyer's wish. I would be willing to bet that if you increase your budget, you will find properties that fit your needs. Do that, but then make an offer based on what would work for you in terms of price. There is inventory out there 
the property that's not selling is not selling because it's not priced correctly. Everything else is selling. So don't be shy. Talk to your real estate agent. If you see a property and you want to make an offer on it, don't worry about what the asking price is. Make the offer. Your real estate agent is bound by law to make that offer on your behalf. And if you get it, woohoo. If you don't, no big deal. There'll be another one. Right. Expand what you're looking at because that property that you would make an offer on that you feel like, oh, I don't want to insult the seller. Tomorrow they could have a price reduction and you're competing with another offer. Have you ever heard anything like that happen? Oh, no, never. Somebody reduces their price and now they have multiple offers and now you're competing with somebody else and the property is at the price that you would have paid for it when it was priced higher. So just make the offer. Right. I completely agree. Thank you for stopping in. Thanks for giving distressed mom some good advice and uh, sharing all your knowledge with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always great. Always great time.